be good for the euro weakness to stimulate exports. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, the question is, when you, the euro is weak, it stimulates export. It makes that the products and services that is produced in the euro much more desirable and much more affordable. Uh, tourism, everything will be much more. If somebody wants to travel, it's easier for him to go to a eurozone area country than to go to, uh, let's say, the UK or to come to the United States. Simply because now this is becoming more expensive. Having said that, we just have to see what the components are of that would be stimulated by the exports and what would be the impact that is going on in the euro with regards to the uh, what's happening in Spain, what's happening in uh, Italy, what's happening on the other. So you have to weigh the pros and the cons and it might be fundamentally good for the euro to be weak but when you're building something the, just let me uh, when you're looking at something fundamentally like this there are two issues that you have to keep an eye on one which is the what we call the cash the end the cash flow, if you will, or the uh, cash inflow and the cash outflow. If you're looking at something that is based upon stimulating exports, you're looking at something which we call trade flow. In the trade flow, if somebody places an order to buy something from the Eurozone, to place that order and for this order to be manufactured to be exported for the letter of credit that is being issued to purchase that item out of a Euro country, that would require a turnaround time of about six months or maybe a year, depending. So right now, because of the problems that are happening, the cash outflow is coming out quickly. Why? Because what's coming in to stimulate the economy with regards to the trade flow, if you will, takes a much longer time. There is a big lag time with that, and that will take several months before you begin to see the impact of the exports or the low euro in, uh, in the balance sheets if you will, or, or to, subs to support the euro, if you will. Okay? So, having said that, let's go to the rest of the stuff. We did the Euro Aussie, Euro Yen, Euro Dollar, uh, and the Euro Pound, right? So, what we need to do now is to look at the other weak currencies versus the, the Yen. So, we're going to look at the Aussie Yen. First of all, I think the better one is the Swiss yen. And the Swiss yen is simply because the, yeah, we'll do the euro cap. Uh, but uh, Khaled, remember, we are looking at strength or weakness. So the, the Swiss is in a bear market here. Yeah. The Swiss is in a, in a bear market, as I showed you, right? And the yen is in a bull market. So that would be a no-brainer. That would be something to look at right now because you're selling the one that's extremely weak and you're buying the one that's extremely strong. So, And this is, if you look at the chart for the Swiss yen, that's what happened from last week. Exactly. It's, it's the bigger bang for your buck. It's the bigger, you're going to invest the margin in either case. So you better put the margin, the one that's going to pay you the most and has much other bigger odds of you making money. So what we have here is that we broke below the 8003, which is the, the big structure point on the weekly. 
And then you have another one here, which is the 7959. The 7959 is this short term. Okay, so we do have the next significant point that should be coming down, which would be the uh, 7893. So we have about another 100 pips to the downside before we can get even a slight pause in the uh, Swiss yen. And we already broke one structural point, which is the 803. And now we broke the second structure point, which is the 79.53, uh, I guess, or 59, 79.59. And we closed the week at 79.46. It is a concerning close. I mean, I don't, I mean, the close is rather depressed or distressed close, if you will, but still it doesn't change the fact that we're going to stay with it on the short side. So if we're going to take it short, I want to make sure that it's below the low of the day. So my short is going to be below 79.59. And I'm going to place my stop right above here. That's going to be in my stop around the inside the range. It's going to be a little bit of wide stop, about 40 pips. Going long, Again, I'm just trying to capture a short covering rally, so this will be my, my buying point over here. And my stop is going to be right there. Okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to short it below seventy nine. 35, 39, I'm sorry. And if we do, we're going to place our stop at 79.80. On the long side, we're going to buy it above 80. 10. And if I do, I'm placing my stop below let's say 79.95 or so, right below here. My structure long point to the upside is the 803. And my structure short point to the downside is what we have picked over here which is the, where was it? Which is the 70, Okay, so that is the Swiss yen. We're going to go short below 79.39. If I do, I'm going to place my stop above 79.80. I'm risking about 40 pips on that stop. And on the short long side, I'm buying it above 80.10. And if I do, my stop is 79.80. 95. You can tell that the stop is tighter on the long side because 
again, this is a short covering. It should fly. If it doesn't hold, then I don't want to stay with that position. I'm not going to give it room to be tested. And the structure long point is the 804, and your structure short point is the 7893. Okay? That is the Swiss yen. So 